The phrase, learn to code, was briefly trending on Twitter yesterday, before Jack quietly but predictably suppressed the tag. It was in reference to BuzzFeed laying off dozens of journalists in its news division as the media outlet restructures. It's a slaughter, one employee who was not authorized to speak publicly told CNN Business. The entire national desk, which produced some of BuzzFeed News' most illustrious feature reporting, was cut. The health desk was also slashed, and the national security desk was disbanded. The website's LGBT desk, an area of coverage in which BuzzFeed News had invested significant resources, was left with only one staffer. The entertainment team also suffered some cuts. In total, 43 people were let go on Friday. Now, you're not going to find me shedding a tear for these people. BuzzFeed is, as Donald Trump once put it, a flaming pile of garbage. As far as BuzzFeed, which is a failing pile of garbage, writing it, I think they're going to suffer the consequences. They already are. They routinely publish unverified or even undisputably false stories and wrap all of it in sensationalist, clickbaity, low-quality writing. They produce almost nothing of any actual merit. And they don't employ journalists, but ideological activists in journalist clothing. Or at least they did until they all got shown the door. Other companies laid off people as well. Gannett, Verizon, Oath, HuffPo. As it turns out, Ideological activism that the majority of the population, or hell, the majority of your user base disagrees with, is not profitable. This phenomenon is otherwise described by the catchy adage, get woke, go broke. But where does the learn to code part come in? Well, in the past, when the working class of hinterland America suffered from layoffs, firings, and factory closings, as the combination of globalist trade policies shipping their jobs overseas and influxes of cheap labor into the market through mass migration completely destroyed America's mining, manufacturing, and energy sectors, these bourgeois upper-class journalists and bloggers sitting in their coastal elite offices would write about how the working class should just learn to code. Forget your old career, forget your old job market, just learn to program and get a job in tech. Hell, it would even be better off for these blue-collar workers, according to the journos, because coding was a white-collar job. Your old skill set was made obsolete due to the changing of the times, and you had to change too to keep up. And with a bit of effort, you can even advance up the social strata and make the shift from being a grubby coal miner or whatever, and transform yourself into a respectable middle-class programmer with a useful skill set. What could go wrong? As it turns out, the skills of a shitty blogger who exclusively writes about male privilege while spending half of her workday melting down on Twitter about Trump is in even less demand than the skills of a coal miner. So I guess it's time for the journos to learn to code too. Except the journos aren't reacting with the grace and civility that they expected the coal miners to react with a few years ago. I believe there is a special, dedicated section of hell just for people with anime Twitter avatars who tell laid-off journalists to learn to code. That might actually be true. There is, after all, a dedicated section of hell for journalists who tell coal miners to learn to code. You're experiencing it right now. If any other journos targeted by layoffs are getting masses of learn-to-code harassment, it was coordinated on 4chan, of course. Imagine being such a privileged piece of shit that you can afford to do a PhD in feminist dance therapy, spend your prime professional years blogging about your vagina, and then when it all inevitably comes crashing down on your head, have the audacity to describe your shit canning as being targeted like it's an attack. And then when people spit your own disgustingly foul rhetoric back in your face, describing it as coordinated harassment. When all of you idiots conspired in whatever private chat you're all in to tell coal miners to learn to code, was that coordinated harassment too? Anyone telling journalists to learn to code today, I have a piece of unsolicited advice for you. Swan dive into Vesuvius. Oh hey, it's Talia Lavin. Didn't you hold a job as a fact checker once? And didn't you critically fail to fact check one of your stories and ultimately sicked a mob of people on a disabled ice worker thinking he had a Nazi tattoo? And after being forced out of the New Yorker for your incompetence, weren't you hired by Media Matters? Because as it turns out, your qualifications or work experience don't matter in your fucking industry, only your politics? You are the exact type of fake news that everyone hates. You're part of the reason people don't trust the media anymore. Oh, there's calls to unionize in the face of all this. Yeah, that'll save a dying industry. Add in another layer of bureaucracy that a company has to sift through in order to get work underway. Maybe you should just learn to code instead. Lord help me if I dare see one more learn to code tweet. Oh, apparently you covered Islamophobia and Muslim civil rights issues at HuffPo. How long until learn to code is an Islamophobic slur? Apparently, Breakaway noticed the trending meme and capitalized on the opportunity. Their coding classes just went on sale, dropping from 100 bucks to just 10.99. If any of you indignant journos are listening in, it may be time to swallow your pride, stop polishing your custom-made IRL Twitter verified badge, and sign up. 
For those who are wondering, HuffPost Opinion, the entire section, is being eliminated. The beautiful, diverse, inclusive baby we built from scratch is gone. Well, I'm sorry, Chloe Angel, but when I look at HuffPost Opinion, I didn't see a baby. I saw a cluster of cells that didn't yet qualify as its own unique life form, and thankfully, in the United States, abortion is still legal. Here's a list of reactions to being laid off from a journalist position organized by Astrological Sign. And through this, you can really see how all of these people are absolutely entitled hipster kids. Taking down the company in a series of drunk tweets. Getting high in the bath. Drunk monologuing. Getting on Tinder to line up free dinners. Airing work grudges. Distributing edibles. Almost all of these answers scream panicking cat lady in plaid, failing to hold things together once reality finally pops their privilege bubble. It should not be a badge of pride that, at 37, you don't know how to be an adult yet. If your job, your school, or the world hasn't yet taught you these lessons, you're most likely an emotionally stunted human being. Far more than any anime Twitter avatar. And it's going to be a horror show when you're finally dragged, kicking and screaming, into the light. This is all happening because it's funny and ironic, sure. But the journalist aversion to the whole learn to code thing shows their true nature. These people believe they're above learning to code. Former factory workers and coal miners must learn to code, but not them. That's below their station. They have this hierarchy in their heads. White middle America's at the bottom. They do menial work until globalism destroys their lives and their town falls to ruin. In order to even be considered human, they need to follow the advice of a new male writing in LA and learn to code to join the acceptable class. A class full of imported brown people who all have programming experience that middle America needs to compete with in a race to the bottom. But of course, if they were to complain about this, they'd be considered racist. And then there's the journalists at the top of the hierarchy. They can't be expected to learn to code, of course, because coding isn't a gentrified profession anymore. Articles from five or ten years ago trying to get women into tech through coding are no longer valid. Programs trying to get women into computer science have shifted from being liberating to sexist. Before long, their own cries of learn to code will become an alt-right code word designed to oppress journalists. Because as I described in a previous video, journalists see themselves as a protected class. Remember the sins of the media as you read all the testimonials floating around out there. When you hear an anecdote about a BuzzFeed writer complaining about how much therapy costs, even though she wrote an article a few years back talking about how racist Patreon is for allowing YouTubers to get money from their fans, remember that this is a bed they made themselves. Remember that when a mentally challenged white kid was tortured by three black kids, the media took the side of the black kids until the truth came out, then quietly dropped the story. Remember the media taking the side of Mattress Girl, and even doubling down as the evidence evidence against her began to pile up. Remember the media's treatment of the mega kids, and their still ongoing desperate scramble to try and pin something, anything, on them, now that Nathan Phillips has turned out to be a hoax. Ultimately, these people should have never held jobs in the first place. The market is finally course correcting. These companies could no longer continue to bear the financial weight of their own ideological obsessions. To put it plainly, reality is kicking in. Radical lefty journalists have spent years using their platform to target ordinary people that, by chance, happen to appear in their crosshairs. Be the wrong race or gender at the wrong time. Accidentally say the wrong thing. Make the wrong facial expression. Tell the wrong joke. Vote for the wrong candidate. And these people would see you financially crippled, see you excommunicated from any workplaces, societies, and friend groups you've cultivated, and see your family ruined. I don't want any of that for the laid-off journos. I just want them to learn to code. Hi, everybody. While no one is born a computer scientist, becoming a computer scientist isn't as scary as it sounds. With hard work and a little math and science, anyone can do it. Don't just consume things, create things. Take an hour to learn more about the technology that touches every part of our lives. That's how you can prepare yourself with the skills you need for your future. And it's how you can help prepare our country for the future as well. America's always been a nation of tinkerers and builders and inventors. We brought the world everything from the light bulb and the telephone to the iPad and the internet. So whether you're a young man trying his hand at programming for the first time, or a young woman who's already hard at work on the next big thing, we're counting on you, America's young people, to keep us on the cutting edge. Thanks everybody, and happy coding.